After the 2024 eclipse, what happens? We've heard about how the National Guard will be deployed. We've heard about how the last time something of this nature happened, three months later, the New Madrid fault line gave way and there was a major earthquake. We've even heard some people theorizing that this will be or closely follow the great and terrible day of the Lord that was prophesied by Joel in Acts 2, verse 17 to 21, which says, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now, I believe the reference to this particular event and day when the Bible says, the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. The prophet Joel is talking about the tribulation period, and we are not yet in the tribulation period. When Jesus warned us about the signs, the key word here is signs of the last days. In Luke 21, he said, there will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. This 2024 eclipse may very well be a prophetic sign. We will only know in time. However, I want to remind you that the Bible tells us to expect signs, mysterious signs, and wonders as we edge closer to the end of days. So you and I are never to look at one single event on one single day and say, that's the sign. We should be more prayerful, more wise and discerning, and put the pieces of this prophetic jigsaw and note that the signs Jesus spoke of include deception, the emergence of false prophets, apostasy, great and fearful signs from heaven, earthquakes, famines, and pestilence. When you put all of this together, it begins to form the biblical end time prophetic landscape. Keep this in mind as you watch this video. What are some of the signs that we are indeed living in a time when Bible prophecy is coming to life? When Jesus warned us about the coming of the Son of Man, he told us in Luke chapter 21, verse 25, there will be signs in the sun in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. With this in mind, I want you to look at this article posted by the Washington Post. It reads, there's a total solar eclipse coming soon. A rare celestial event is mere months away. On April 8th, Afternoon will morph into night for about four minutes from northern Mexico to New England. The air will suddenly become colder by around 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Birds and insects will fall silent in the darkness. Confused plants will ramp down their food production. Nocturnal animals like owls and bats will begin to stir. These are the signs of a total solar eclipse when the moon temporarily blocks all sunlight on a swath of Earth. But this year's total eclipse is special because we may not see another one in the United States for two more decades. Now, for just a moment, there can be two perspectives regarding this. There will be those interested in science who will say this is a great event, a once-in-a-lifetime spectacle, and then the other perspective will be from those who study biblical prophecy, those who are reading the Bible and watching for the signs. And this group of people will look at this event and think, 
Could this be a sign? Could this be a warning from God? One publication, named Harbringers Daily, wrote a piece that offers a biblical perspective into this event. And in an article titled, 2024 X Solar Eclipse, Coincidence or Final Warning, they say, the pattern of two solar eclipses forming an X over the US also happened in the early 1800s. The first solar eclipse occurred on June 16, 1806 with the second completing an X on September 17, 1811. The following quote comes from the New Madrid, Missouri website. The New Madrid earthquakes were the biggest earthquakes in American history. They occurred in the central Mississippi Valley, but they were felt as far away as New York City, Boston, Montreal, and Washington, D.C. President James Madison and his wife Dolly felt them in the White House. Church bells rang in Boston. From December 16, 1811 through March of 1812, there were over 2,000 earthquakes in the central Midwest, and between 6,000 to 10,000 earthquakes in the Boothville of Missouri, where New Madrid is located near the junction of Ohio and Mississippi rivers. In the known history of the world, no other earthquakes have lasted so long or produced so much evidence of damage as the New Madrid earthquakes. Three of the earthquakes are on the list of America's top earthquakes. The first one on December 16, 1811, a magnitude of 8.1 on the Richter scale. The second on January 23, 1812, at 7.8. And the third on February 7, 1812 at as much as 8.8 .8 magnitude. Could the upcoming completion of an X across the US midsection by the April 8th, 2024 eclipse point to another catastrophe in the months afterward? So, with all this in mind, as children of God, what do we do? What do we make of all this? How do we process all of this? Well, once again, the Bible says in Luke chapter 21, verse 25 to 27, and there will be strange signs in the sun, moon, and stars. And here on earth, the nations will be in turmoil, perplexed by the roaring seas and strange tides. People will be terrified at what they see coming upon the earth, for the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then, everyone will see the Son of Man coming on a cloud with power and great glory. The Bible has given us all of this information so that we can be prepared, not fearful, not terrified, but prepared. Bible prophecy is a puzzle, a puzzle with many different pieces, and they are all clear to see in the Bible. Be wise in these times. That's my message for you today. In this video, I want to highlight some, some strange things that are happening. Number one, could the beast system already be in motion? Revelation 13 verse 16 to 17 says, He required everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to be given a mark on the right hand or on the forehead, and no one could buy or sell anything without that mark, which was either the name of the beast or the number representing his name. A publication called Modern Diplomacy published an article titled, Cash Now Extinct as Citizen Use implanted microchips instead. The central bank, which predicts cash may fade from Sweden, is testing a digital currency, an e-krona, to keep firm control of the money supply. In the article, they go on to say, ask most people in Sweden how often they pay with cash, and the answer is almost never. 
a fifth of Swedes in a country of 10 million people do not use automated teller machines anymore. More than 4,000 Swedes have implanted microchips in their hands, allowing them to pay for rail travel and food or enter keyless offices with a wave. Restaurants, buses, parking lots, and even pay toilets depend on clicks rather than cash. Now, a lot of people speculate what the mark of the beast will be exactly or whether it's already here. Whatever the mark is, whether it's a small electronic chip or something else, it will replace physical money and that will lead us to the realm of a one world monetary system, a fully fledged cashless society. The perfect scenario for the Antichrist to be able to make you decide whether you will pledge allegiance to him and live normally or choose not to take the mark and be cut off from the ability to make any financial transactions. Number two, Luke chapter 21 verse 25 says, there will be signs in the sun, in the moon and in the stars and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Now, the Washington Post published an article that read, there's a total solar eclipse coming soon. A rare celestial event is mere months away. On April 8th, afternoon will morph into night for about four minutes from northern Mexico to New England. The air will suddenly become colder by around 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Birds and insects will fall silent in the darkness. Confused plants will ramp down their food production. Nocturnal animals like owls and bats will begin to stir. These are the signs of a total solar eclipse when the moon temporarily blocks all sunlight on a swath of Earth. But this year's total eclipse is special because we may not see another one in the United States for two more decades. Now, for just a moment, there can be two perspectives regarding this. There will be those interested in science who will say this is a great event, a once-in-a-lifetime spectacle. And then, the other perspective will be from those who study biblical prophecy, those who are reading the Bible and watching for the signs. And this group of people will look at this event and think, could this be a sign? Could this be a warning from God? Number three. The Business Insider published a headline saying, See inside the luxury bunkers where the super rich reportedly plan to save themselves from a future apocalypse. A few quotes from the article read as follows. Rushkoff said he was repeatedly asked about the best ways to survive climate change or societal collapse as the executives detailed their plans to build underground bunkers to avoid what they called the event. After this was published, reports later surfaced that Mark Zuckerberg spent 187 million secretly buying 1,600 acres of Hawaii land, and now he is reportedly building a massive, self-sustaining apocalypse bunker. The Yahoo Finance article reads, The compound, known as Kulau Ranch, is set to include a 5,000 square foot underground bunker, complete with its own energy and food supplies. The bunker's design incorporates a metal door filled with concrete a feature commonly found in bunkers and bomb shelters. This project, which reflects a growing trend among Silicon Valley elites for preparedness and luxury. So what are we to make of all of this? 
Do the rich know something that we don't? Are they preparing to survive a future major event that's around the corner? Can the rich buy their way out of a catastrophic world event? Well, I believe that the real children of God will put their trust in Christ. He is the best form of protection against any apocalyptic event or any type of doomsday scenario. Revelation 6, verse 15 to 17 says, Then everyone, the kings of the earth, the rulers, the generals, the wealthy, the powerful, and every slave and free person all hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains. And they cried to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of the one who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come, and who is able to survive? So you see, the Bible tells us that there will come a time when the mighty men of the world, the rich and wealthy of the world, the kings and those held in high esteem in society, there will come a time when all those who are not in Christ they will hide in caves and rocks, trying to escape the judgment of God. Number four. Now, if you've been paying attention to the media recently, you will most likely have come across headlines about a certain disease X. CEPI, the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovation, states on their website that Disease X is the name given by scientists and the World Health Organization to an unknown pathogen that can emerge in future and cause serious international epidemic or pandemic. Disease X itself is hypothetical. It does not exist. But the concept of Disease X describes a very real and growing threat to human health, and one the world must better prepare to respond to. Now, because of this hypothetical virus, leaders representing people all over the planet are meeting together in hopes of securing some sort of plan of action. For many people listening, when they hear this news, the news of a potential future deadly virus, there will be a cause for major anxiety in the hearts of some and almost create a culture of fear. Now, I want to bring your attention to Luke 21, verse 9 to 11, which says, When you hear of wars and uprisings, do not be frightened. These things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, famines, and pestilences in various places, and fearful events and great signs from heaven. Notice that this Bible verse covers wars, it covers pestilences, which are pandemics, and it covers extreme weather events. Now, it very much looks like we could, in fact, be approaching the last days according to biblical prophecy. Now, even if this is the case, even if the world is approaching its final days, what are we supposed to do? Well, for starters, as Christians, what we should not be doing is running around in a panic like everyone else. We should not be giving in to and encouraging this culture of constant fear. The Bible tells us the one thing that we should fear is God. In fact, everything else is not worthy of making us afraid at all. Number five, 
wars, and rumors of wars. A survey conducted by the American Psychological Association found that nearly 7 in 10 Americans feared that we are at the beginning stages of World War III. So, according to the survey, 7 out of 10 Americans are getting home from work, eating dinner with their families, and are tucking their kids in at night all with the overarching gloom in the background of their mind that a world war could break out at any second. When we look to Christ, we don't need to be afraid. A world war very well could be brewing. But at the end of the day, none of these need to make us as God's people afraid. If we are looking to Christ, we can avoid sinking into our fears. We have no need to fear because Jesus is watching over us at every moment. Many people waste their lives away, panicking and stressing out about current events that are going on in the world. That is not to say it's not important to keep a close eye on these things or even take caution in regards to these events. but. To be outright afraid is not a place God wants us to be as a Christian. As Christians, we know that God is protecting us. And although the world around us may seem scary, we really have no reason to be afraid. Ultimately, our lives are in God's hands, and He is responsible for protecting us. God loves us and is watching over us.